The Samsung Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy S9 Plus were literally announced less than 48 hours ago. And yes, even though these phones were plastered across the internet many months before their actual announcement, the hype is very real. So today we are comparing the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, the very pinnacle of what Samsung has to offer right now, against the iPhone X, the same from Apple. And you'll start to realise as we get towards the end of this comparison that the Galaxy S9 Plus is more similar to Apple's iPhone X than any Samsung phone previously. And it's very interesting. But before we get there, we've got to talk about displays, because the fronts of both of these devices are dominated by large, colourful Super AMOLED panels. It's tough to complain about colour reproduction here, and whilst the S9 Plus is considerably sharper on paper, it is tough to tell looking at the screens even close up. As you might have guessed, the S9 Plus has the larger display among the two, but because of the iPhone X's super elongated aspect ratio, what this really means is the S9 Plus's display is about the same height, but just a little bit wider. While the S9 Plus though has almost invisible, very tiny side bezels, the bottom chin of the phone is much larger than seen on the iPhone X, which has almost a uniformly sized bezel all the way around the phone. I think both of these smartphones have quite a unique visual identity of their own, and an appealing one at that. They're both great looking phones with great looking displays. But interestingly, whilst the S9 Plus's panel is even brighter than that of the S8 Plus, when you're viewing from slightly harsher angles, the iPhone X actually holds up a little bit better. So a lot of people weren't particularly excited for the S9 and the S9 Plus, at least not as much as perhaps previous Samsung flagships, and one of the reasons for that is how similar it looks to the S8. So we're talking Gorilla Glass front and back, and an aluminium frame, which compares to stainless steel and glass for the iPhone X, which is considered to be a little bit more durable, but visually speaking they look quite similar, and they feel similar in the hand. I actually think the stainless steel frame of the iPhone X looks kind of cheap considering it's a thousand pound smartphone which is even more than the Galaxy S9 Plus, but it is slimmer, it's lighter, it's much more compact feeling, and that is a definite plus considering the display is actually not much smaller. But one thing I've got to give to the Samsung here are the phone colour options. Whilst the iPhone X, as with every other iPhone, comes in very stock, very traditional colours, the Galaxy S9 phones also have coral blue and my favourite lilac purple. I think this one is probably my favourite of the bunch. The cameras are where things start to diverge a little bit, because whilst on paper both phones are rocking dual 12 megapixel sensors, that's pretty much where the similarities end. And this is only a first impression, camera is something which definitely takes a little bit more time to play around with to really give a conclusive answer. But here's what I think. If anything, the iPhone seems to be capturing slightly deeper colours, slightly darker shadows and brighter highlights. The photos are a little bit more vibrant. But also, whilst on the iPhone it might seem like the detail being captured is higher, if you zoom in a little bit more than that, it turns out the S9 Plus almost always ends on top. Both phones also have dual cameras and therefore also offer portrait modes and close to lossless levels of zooming. And what's nice to see on the S9 Plus is that they've managed to match Apple and also offer 4K video at 60 frames per second, but in a way exceed it by offering bursts of 960 frames per second slow-mo, which from the demos we've seen so far looks pretty impressive. Something else we definitely can't miss out here is what Samsung describes as dual aperture. The ability for the phone's camera on the S9 to better adapt to lighting conditions, and due to the largest aperture ever seen on a phone, the Galaxy S9 should be capable of better low light photos. But again, this is something we've got to test a little bit more later down the line. The obvious lead on from camera is to talk about the AR emojis on the S9. But the problem is, whilst of course they're heavily inspired by Apple's and emojis, they just aren't as well implemented here. Apple with the iPhone X uses true depth tracking technology, and these animojis really do come to life through this. But unfortunately, at least as of now, this may change with an update. The AR emojis on the S9 are just using a front camera and they aren't even close. I do think it's quite cool with the Galaxy that you can scan your face in and create a personalised emoji that's supposed to represent you. It's a nice touch, but at the same time it's a shame that it doesn't resemble you a little bit more. Both phones also have a little bit of a different way to unlock them. Whereas the iPhone X has skipped the fingerprint scanner and has gone straight for face identification, Samsung has two options. You can either use the much better placed than the S8 fingerprint scanner now on the rear of the phone, or you can use Intelligent Scan, which combines face and iris scanner to bring the level of security up closer to what Apple can offer with its 3D depth sensing technology. One thing I've got to say I was super excited about with the new S9 phones are speakers. 
And they didn't disappoint, they've included Dolby Atmos surround sound capable speakers now, a combination of the downwards firing speaker and the earpiece, and I'd say it sounds about 20-40% to louder than the Galaxy S8 Plus, a decent improvement and again, one of those that brings it closer to the iPhone X. Now it wasn't a case that the iPhone X was better than the S8 Plus in every single way, but what it seems like is happening with the S9 Plus is Samsung is closing the gap in the areas where the S8 Plus was lacking, but at the same time bringing new things to the table, which we're getting to. With every new generation of phones, one thing we can always look forward to is more processing power, and that hasn't changed here. The Galaxy S9 Plus is rocking 6GB of RAM and either the Snapdragon 845 or the Exynos 9810, which both tower above last generation in terms of performance. So again, whilst the iPhone X in 2017 had a slight performance lead over the Galaxy S8 Plus and other Android phones, that is no longer the case between these two phones. The S9 Plus certainly feels like a fast, snappy, responsive device, but side by side with a phone like the iPhone X, you can't help but feel like you're missing out on that buttery smoothness that is almost associated with Apple's ecosystem. But just generally in terms of heavy tasks like multitasking and gaming, both phones are going to zip through it. These are the best of the best here. Not to mention, the Samsung has another huge advantage in the area of storage, with room for micro SD cards up to 400 gigabytes. The iPhone X doesn't have any support for them. While the S9 Plus over here is packing Android 8.0 Oreo, the iPhone X uses Apple's latest iOS 11. And this has been tweaked to work with the gesture-based operating system on the iPhone X, which feels fluid and futuristic, but at the same time quite a stark shift from other iPhones and not always the most practical. The S9 Plus though will feel right at home if you're coming from any Samsung device and to be honest most other Android phones. Alright, so as we said at the beginning of this video, there is no doubt here that, whether through coincidence or inspiration, Samsung has really converged with Apple on the Samsung Galaxy S9. These two devices share a vertical camera array, advanced face scanning, AR emojis, as well as dual speakers in almost exactly the same arrangement. I'm going to need to spend a little bit more time with both phones before I reach any sort of conclusion here, but safe to say this is a very competitive battle. Both phones have their pluses, both phones have their minuses, and it's not going to be easy. Alright guys, we dropped a pretty cool Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus unboxing yesterday, so if you missed that, go check it out, I'll leave it as a card above. And if you guys are new here, I would appreciate it if you could smash that subscribe button down below. It would really help me out. With that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.